السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear colleagues and friends Hope that you are all doing well and fine uh, Our weekly meeting This week our topic will be The discharge summary uh, Why the discharge summary? Actually, uh, first of all This is a repeated station in the exam Especially on the online exam In the teaching station You will mostly find a paperwork station like the discharge summary, like the CTG, uh, MDT referral letter. Uh, so because there is no probes or mannequins on uh, the online exam, so the paperwork is expected to be as one of the stations in the exam. This is number one. Number two, I always feel that there is a gap between the UK candidates and the overseas candidates especially in the formalities, the paperwork, and the clinical governance. So one example of this is the discharge summary. This is part of their daily work. They are writing the discharge summary from their beginning of training since the foundation year one. So it will not be a big issue for an ST5 to mention how to write a discharge summary in the proper way or how to critically appraise a discharge summary that was written by a trainee. Uh, but at the same point, it will be some challenging uh, station for the overseas candidates because we, we are all writing discharge summaries, but not all of us, we know what is included in the electronic performa for discharging patients in UK. So I will try my best today to close this gap to make it more fair, at least during evaluation of the exam, so uh, all the candidates will be evaluated in the same uh, way. So the problem in our exam, as I say, that the evaluation is norm reference test. What is the meaning of norm reference? It means that the student performance is evaluated or compared against the performance of their peers. So I will try my best today to close the gap between you and the UK candidates. The objectives and the conclusion of today's topic will be in this electronic discharge summary. If you know what's included in this summary, you know how to critically appraise and how to go a step by step in this station. So let's start how you will face this station in the exam. You will have a scenario that this is a simulated colleague task, evaluating your communication with colleagues, your applied clinical knowledge and the patient safety. They will give you a scenario where they will ask you to talk to your uh, F foundation year one, uh, who already did a discharge letter for one of the patients in the ward. Uh, the midwife is concerned about the discharge letter and you are going to meet him. Your agenda will be uh, that you will explain to him the importance of the discharge letter and you will explain to him how to write a legible discharge summary and you will answer his questions and concerns. This station will be uh, composed of many papers. So please take care. You have to uh, know how many papers are provided, especially on the online exam. At the bottom of the page, you will find the number of papers. So please make sure that you read all the information. They will provide you the case notes about the case. You, you can go through it quickly because this will help you in adding some information to the discharge summary. Also, you will be provided by the operation notes, uh, telling you the information uh, about the surgery, uh, when was it done, and what was the finding and the final uh, diagnosis at the end of the surgery. And they will give you the summary or the hospital discharge summary that was written by the trainee. The most important part, after reading the scenario here, go directly the discharge summary of the trainee, read it quickly, and then go back to the operation notes and the case notes 
find what are the information that can be added. That what's needed during the two minutes reading time from you. Read the scenario, go to the hospital discharge summary, find out what you need to add from the information, then search about this information in the case notes and in the operation notes. So as a usual, you have to introduce yourself, create a good rapport with your junior colleague. Always in any teaching station, check for bullying or undermining because there may be a hidden agenda in this station. Uh, always be smiling, uh, encourage him during the station. No blaming atmosphere at all. Don't blame him for whatever mistakes he did in the discharge letter. Uh, and explain to him the aim of the station. The aim here, you are going to show him a better way of uh, writing the discharge summary to be more legible and more informative. Again, you have to put some emphasis on the importance of the discharge letter, and we'll come to this point in details now. Then check the background of that trainee. Please, you have to check here for the background regarding writing the discharge letter and also the background regarding the patient's condition. So if the patient had ectopic pregnancy, you have to ask him if he knows enough information about the ectopic pregnancy. If it is third or fourth degree perennial tear, uh, you will ask him about his background regarding the information about the third or fourth degree perennial tear. And also ask him if he follows the progress of the case, if he knows the clinical progress of the case or no, because this is important to write a full details about the discharge summary that he should know what was the clinical progress of this case. Next step, put your agenda. Uh, you can say here what we are going to do. I will tell you the importance of the discharge letter. Then we will see what we can do to make it more informative. And then I will provide you with our unit's discharge letter and electronic performance so you can familiarize yourself with it and provide him by the end articles or guidelines. Please, in the teaching station, when you are providing a colleague uh, written information, this is an article or guideline, not leaflets. Leaflets are provided for the patient. It is a patient information leaflet, but here the word will be articles or guidelines or references on how to write the discharge summary. Then involve, always involve him during the discussion. Uh, be cheerful, uh, smiling uh, during all the station. He's a colleague. So this will help you a lot in the communication with colleague. Always offer help and ask him not to hesitate at any point to ask if he has any queries. Coming to the discharge letter itself. So you can start by mentioning what is the discharge letter. Uh, you can say it is a discharge summary uh, is a clinical report prepared by the health professionals at the conclusion of the hospital stay or series of treatment. So this is a good definition for the discharge summary. The discharge process is a complex process. Uh, an essential part of this process is documentation. And the documentation here is the discharge summary. So the discharge summary, the definition again, it is a clinical report prepared by a health professional at the conclusion of the hospital stay or series of treatment. This is a definition. So what about the importance of the discharge letter? There are so many points that we can mention here, but let's conclude it in three points. The first, the discharge letter, it is the primary mode of communication between the hospital care team and the aftercare providers. So it ensures the continuity of patient care. So the GB who is going to carry on her care later should know what happened during the hospital. So. This is the first importance of the discharge letter, continuity of care and good communication between the hospital team and the GB team. The second importance, the discharge letter 
it may become of importance in case of any legal claims. It will be considered as a legal document if the patient complains or she has any problem during the course of her treatment. The third, import, uh, third importance of the discharge letter is that it can be used as a part of the clinical governance and quality improvement. It can be used in audits. It can be used in reflective practice. So it is a part of clinical governance and quality improvement. So now we know what is the definition of the discharge letter and what is the importance of the discharge letter. This will be the points on how to start your agenda during the station. The next point, the criteria of good discharge letter. You will not tell these points uh, at the beginning, but you have to put an emphasis on each point at the time you need to say it. So what is the criteria of good discharge letter? It should have enough information about what happened to the patient and what needs to be done later. Please, in the discharge letter, don't forget to mention the red flag, signs and symptoms for the patient to seek advice. This is very important point in the safety. So you have to mention that the red flag sign and symptoms should be mentioned in the discharge letter to tell the patient what are the symptoms and signs that will guide her to seek an urgent care. It should be clear and legible. Avoid abbreviations in the discharge summary because the patient will have a copy and some of the GPs may not be familiar with some abbreviation some of us are writing. So no abbreviation. You should avoid any information that are offending and not acceptable by the patients. You have to make sure that the information you give and the suggested plan are according to protocols. So if you are going to give any information in the discharge summary, it has to be according to an evidence or guideline, always tell the trainee, it's not a shame to go and uh, review the literature or to check the literature or seek help from senior colleagues if you need to confirm any information, especially if you find that he did some mistake or he wrote uh, as a uh, wrong treatment or wrong dose of the medication. Always to make it easier, it is very important to follow the regular performer according to the unit's protocol. Very important, another point in the exam, this point, please don't forget to mention that the discharge letter will be in three copies. One will be kept in the file of the patient. One will be given to the patient herself, and one will be sent for the GB. There are two time limits for the uh, discharge summary or the discharge letter to be written. So if the patient is going home and she's in a stable condition, it has to be sent to the GB with, within seven calendar days, within seven calendar days, not seven working days, within seven calendar days. But if the discharge is within the facility, if the patient will be discharged, for example, from the gynae ward to the surgical ward, the discharge summary has to be written as soon as possible within 24 hours. So these informations are very important and these are key points that has to be mentioned in the station. Now you will have the discharge summary that's written by your junior colleague. So what are you going to do? You are going to critically appraise the foundation year one discharge letter. Critical appraisal is a, a type of giving feedback. So always remember the feedback sandwich. The feedback sandwich, it should include the upper layer will be positive, the lower layer will be positive, and in between will be the negative. So always start, but what was done good? And then what has to be done to make it better? And then finally, close by positive thing again and encourage him to continue his good work. So please, 
always remember the positive points. Don't give only the negative points in the discharge letter. So start by the positive things that you find in the letter, end by the positive thing, positive summary about what he did, right? And thank him for uh, being involved in the work from the first day. But in between, you have to mention the things that needs to be improved or to be corrected for the discharge letter to be more uh, legible and more informative. So you can start your appraisal by saying, uh, Sam, you did very well writing the discharge letter for Mrs. Luida. Do you follow her case? Uh, and do you have any idea about her clinical progress? So this is a way how to start your appraisal with your colleague. Again, that's very excellent. I can see here that you type the patient name and the age, her hospital number, which are very important demographic data that has to be mentioned in the discharge uh, summary. Uh, uh, but I will be, uh, it will be more informative, Sam, if you follow the unit's performer according to the protocol. So the performer will contain more essential demographic data. And here, flashlight again, flashlight at this point. What are the demographic data that should be included in the discharge summary? This is another very important point. You have to mention it in the exam, especially that all the discharge letters you will face in the station will lack most of the demographic data. The demographic data or details are not only for the patient. The demographic data includes the patient details, the GB details, and the hospital details. So the patient details include her full name. And the full name means if he's writing only one name, it has to be completed. And also, if there is patient's preferred name, if relevant, it can be written. The date of birth has to be written. The NHS number unique for the patient has to be mentioned even if the hospital number is written. Her address has to be added. Telephone number has to be added for contact. The sex, ethnicity, and the next of kin in case of emergency situation. So you have to tell your junior colleague either by yourself or he will prompt you to tell him what are the demographic data. These are the demographic data for the patient. What about the GB? The demographic data also for the GB has to be written, including his name, his address, the email, the telephone and fax numbers for contact, and the GB practice identifier code. The HGB will have a practice code specifically for him. Then also the third point in the demographic data are the hospital details. The hospital details should include who is the discharging consultant, which is responsible for the patient at the time of discharge. The discharging specialty or department, for example, the ob department, and the discharge destination from hospital. So you have to mention if the patient is going home or she's going to another department or she is going to one of the care houses. So these are the important demographic data and it's a very important and critical point in the exam. Also, you have to mention it. Please uh, try not to miss uh, this information because all the discharge summaries that will come in the exam will miss the demographic data. After each part, you have to involve your colleague in the discussion. So you can say at this point, uh, Sam, don't you think adding this data will make it more official? So you are involving him, you are encouraging him, you are asking his personal opinion. So this is a good point in the communication with your colleague. Another important point, the date and time of admission and discharge. That's very important that to be mentioned here. So you can say, what do you, what do you think if you mention in your letter the date and time of admission and date of discharge? So when you send the uh, discharge letter to the GB, he can say that uh, the patient stayed in hospital only for one day, so he will know that there was no major complication and the recovery was well. What do you think, Sam? Does it make 
sense? So it's a conversation, please. It is a conversation between you and your colleague, not only a lecture or teaching, solid teaching station. So make a rabo, always ask him in between, always ask him to repeat. So the demographic data, the date and the time of admission and discharge, then the summary statement. What is the summary statement? It's always a good practice to start your discharge letter with a summary statement. This summary statement will contain a brief of the patient main problem. It will include her name and her age and the main presenting symptom. The reason why the patient was admitted to hospital, the final diagnosis and the procedure she had. This is a summary statement that will be put at the top of the discharge letter after the demographic data. It will give a brief idea about the course of care that the patient received during her hospital stay. So for example, in this case, we can say that uh, Ms. Luida Martinelli is 26 years old patient who was admitted complaining of uh, right-sided abdominal pain and spotting, uh, was diagnosed as a case of ectopic pregnancy for which she had laparoscopic right salpingectomy. And this is a brief about her case. So two or three sentences will give you a brief about the story, what happened to the patient during her hospital stay. So you can say it's always a good practice to start your letter with a summary statement that briefs the patient main problem. The next part, when you are going in the details of the discharge summary, you can tell him, you can write your letter either in a bullet points or in the form of the story. These are two accepted ways of writing the discharge summary, either in bullets as he did here or in a full story. So you can brace him at this point and you said, I can see that you wrote your discharge summary in a bullet points, which is a good point that makes it easier to uh, understand the discharge. But there is another way also, you can write it in the form of a story. Both, of, both the methods are accepted and good ways for writing the discharge summary. Then in any active problem you find in the patient case notes or in the uh, operative notes, you have to find the active problem of the patient. Then you have to analyze this active problem. You have to ensure that all these points are mentioned. The active problem should have a brief description. The brief description of the problem will include the evaluation. So the evaluation, what was the complaint of the patient on admission? Brief uh, idea about the examination finding and the relevant investigation. You will find so many information in the case notes you don't have to write all this information, just as a positive finding related to the main complaint of the patient during the admission. Uh, the treatment which was offered to the patient, the outcome, and if there was any complications, then the follow-up of the patient, and finally, the patient instructions and medications after discharge. So these are the main points that you have to mention in the discharge summary. Am I clear so far, Sam? Always please don't forget to involve or engage your junior colleague in the discussion. Am I clear so far? Do you have any questions so far? Am I clear till that point? So ask him a question now to check his understanding. So can you tell me what needs to be added here in your letter till that point? So he will mention one or two points and now you will take the lead again. You will guide the discussion. I'm Braze his answer. Excellent, Sam. Yes, exactly, as you said. You have to mention here the reason of admission, or you can say the reason of uh, her admission uh, should be added, uh, which is abdominal pain and spotting after a missed period in our case. Uh, also, the relevant examination findings that's related to her complaint also should be added to give an idea about her condition on admission. The full picture will be more clear, Sam, if you added some relevant admission labs and the scan reports. Isn't it, Sam? What do you think? So after each point, you are taking his opinion. You are engaging him in an unblaming way 
and always be cheerful. Smile, smile, please, during this station. So another important critical and safety point in the discharge letter. What are the investigations beside the other information that has to be added in the discharge summary? So regarding our patient here, from the investigation, this patient during her case notes, we observed that her blood group is A negative. So Sam, it will be better if you mention that her blood group is A negative in the discharge letter for the GP to ensure that she will receive the entity if she needs it. If she needs it means if the husband is positive and there is indication for giving entity, it has to be mentioned and it has to be written clearly that her group is negative and she may need entity. Also, Sam, if you add the result of HB and their HCG level, it may be important for later follow-up. This results in the uh, uh, discharge summary will be written. You will not give you will not give a copy of the investigation because the, your trainee may ask you, can I put a copy from the investigation? No, you will just write the result of the relevant investigations, but don't put a copy from the investigation in the discharge summary. So this is regarding the point of investigation, which is a very important point, in both the clinical knowledge and in the patient safety. The next point is regarding the main treatment which was offered to the patient. So this patient has surgical details. She has surgical management. She had laparoscopic uh, right salpingectomy for ectopic pregnancy. So again, start by the positive. Sam, I can see here that you wrote the name of the procedure. You did very well that. But other details also can be added like the date of the surgery, if there was any complications related to the procedure, and if there was any specific anesthetic uh, issues. So the procedure, you have to mention some details, some more details about the procedure. I start by the good point that he mentioned the name of the procedure, then the points that can be made to make the search letter better, and by the end, tell him another positive point again. So this is regarding to the procedure or the treatment the patient received. Also, you will tell him about the discharge condition. The discharge condition has to be mentioned. Why? Because it gives an idea about the patient state on discharge. So you can say, as in our case, our patient is in a stable condition on discharge. So this point better to be added in the discharge letter. The red flags, please. Again, the red flags. On the discharge, you have to mention to the patient what are the symptoms and signs that will make the patient seek advice sooner than later. Uh, also provide her contact details and you can give her patient information leaflet about the ectopic pregnancy, how with her recovery after uh, the ectopic pregnancy. So the red flags, the contact number, and the patient information leaflets, again, points of safety. Then patient instructions. These are a point under communication with the patient and families. If you need to instruct the patient regarding her activity after surgery, like driving, like uh, taking major decisions, especially if she received general anesthesia, if the patient needs any diet advice, and if she will need any discharge medications. So these are uh, all fall under the point of patient's instruction, which has to be mentioned in the uh, discharge letter. So uh, give an example again, relate what you are telling him to the discharge summary or to the case that you had. So in this case, in our case, we can add some analgesia as this patient will have some pain after her surgery, uh, after ensuring that there is no drug allergies, please, in any station in the exam, whatever the scenario, if it is a teaching station, if it is a structured discussion, or if it is a simulated patient task, push the drug allergy in the station. Don't forget the drug allergy. You will be surprised that this point also is a point of safety in the discharge letter if you are going to mention medication. So please, please 
don't forget the drug allergy, whatever the station is. Whatever the station is, don't, for, don't forget the drug allergy. The next will be the follow-up. So uh, it should be mentioned clearly, either the follow-up will be in the hospital or with her, with her GP. Uh, if there are tissue samples or biopsies or lab results, uh, for example, in our case here, um, the patient had laparoscopic salpingectomy, so the tissue will be sent for a biopsy, so the patient uh, uh, has to know what are the arrangement regarding her next follow-up. So the follow-up where will be in the hospital or with the GP, and if there is any follow-up for results of labs or biopsies, it has to be mentioned in the discharge letter. Very important point to close the discharge letter. The person who wrote the discharge letter has to sign by the end. It will be more legible to put your name and post at the end of the letter, sir. Okay, so this is the final point in the discharge summary. And it can be considered as a point from the demographics, but it, it will be mentioned at the end that the discharge summary should be signed by the person who wrote it because it will be more legible. So you should put your name and post at the end of the letter. Sam, what do you think? Now he will give his opinion or one or two sentence. Then finally, the final positive point, you have to close the station. Again, you are giving feedback. So positive at the start, negative in between, and now close with the positive points. Overall, you did great job, Sam. I'm so happy that you are involved in the work from the first day. This will make you learn fast and you will be uh, more professional within a short time. But, but what do you think? Won't it better and more informative if you make these modifications on your discharge summary? He will say yes. So encourage him and offer support so you can make uh, these modifications and I will review the discharge letter with you again. I'm always available here for help, Sam. I will give you some nice and green top guidelines uh, about the management of ectopic pregnancy. And I will give you some articles on how to write an informative discharge summary. Any questions, Sam? Please, how do you feel about the session? Now you have to ask him about his feedback. He will give you his feedback and then thank him and tell him stay safe. We are still in the COVID time. So please, in any station, thank you and stay safe and keep in touch, please. Okay, so I hope I closed the gap because of the brats, which make a difference between the UK candidates and the overseas candidates to make it more fair during the evaluation of the exam. I'm sorry I mentioned so many information here, but uh, uh, I stressed on the important points. At least you can find uh, the words to fill the 10 minutes station. This is an easy station. You can make it and you have to put it in your bucket in the exam. So I hope it was useful. Uh, if you find it useful, please share it with your friends and don't forget me in your prayers. Inshallah, I will announce on the group about uh, our next practice session. It will be about the discharge letters. Uh, we will practice together how to go through the station. And the next time, uh, the stations will be about the pre and post operative going around. Uh, thank you so much. Stay safe. And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.